Hey guys, I'm here on behalf of LC Beyond Fate. I'm here just to bring in a standard um, Shadow Paladin deck. So, obviously, this is full bow to starter. It's pretty self explanatory. You ride, you draw one card, and you start your turn. That's how your turn starts out normally with these type of decks in standard. Trash. Pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we have the grade three lineup. Well, the first one being Phantom Blaster Dragon. So, we're going to be playing four of these. And we have the skill. They're both act skills, by the way. So, Counter Blast 1, retire three of your rear guards. Your opponent chooses three of his or her units and retires them. This unit then gets plus 15k in a crit until the end of the turn. So, what's good about the card is that you ride, you get the Force Imaginary Gift. And depending on the deck you're fighting against, you decide whether you give that Force Marker to your Vanguard or you just give it to a rear guard. There are times you're going to want to give it to your rear guard because you might want to end the game quickly. So, and the other skill, which is a really good skill, if you have ridden a uh, grade 3 twice or rode a grade 3 twice, um, you'll have a grade 3 in your soul. So what's neat about this is if your opponent has no cards on their field, you can give them a damage by soul blasting a grade 3. So that play works when an opponent is trying to keep their units in their hand and maybe they'll take a crit from your vanguard and they'll have counter blast. So they'll go off maybe during their turn, call a few units, depending on the clan like Nubatama, they'll call their hand back to, they'll call their field back to their hand because they bounce back. And if they have no, no cards on their field, you just start your turn off, soul blast one, take a damage. I've done it a couple of times. Um, same thing with um, Murakumo. You can pop their field ahead of time. If you, if you know, if you manage their, their resources, if you don't have too many damages, you can pop their field and they won't have too many cards on the field when you start your turn. So you can pop their cards, so blast one, give them damage. The only neg side of this card is, I'm gonna say yes, it's neg, is that um, they can get a damage trigger on defense and it sucks because then they get plus 10 to their Vanguard and you're just like, all right, I just use the skill and here we go. So that just sucks sometimes. But no, no, more or less, it's a really good card. It's pretty good. It's I'm gonna say that. So this card right here, this is Gust Blaster Dragon, the recent card we just got in the, the recent set. I still think it's a good card, but I think Phantom Blast Dragon is a lot better in some scenarios, depending on how you're playing. But this card is supposed to deny your opponent damages for the sole factor of his his um his skill altogether. So he has two skills. When it attacks a vanguard, Counter Blast 1 and retire two rear guards, you draw a card, and your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it. And then this unit itself gets plus 10k. Okay. His other skill is when your rear guard is retired, if your soul has a grade 3 with Blaster in its card name, this unit gets plus crit until end of turn. Mind you, the part where it says when your rear guard is retired, this is an auto skill. So every time a unit is retired off of your field, this unit gets a crit. So yes, when you attack, you kill two of your units, you get two crits. So your Vanguard is now swinging for three crits. But if you manage to call a unit on top of another unit, like uh, force retiring one of your own units, you get an additional crit. So normally if you do something like that, which I'm going to explain further with the one card in the deck that some people play, um, it can wind up having your Vanguard swing for four damages and they, they're definitely not going to take that and they're probably blocking. If they take it, then they're betting on a chance that you won't get a crit or they probably know they can't block it and they're going to probably die right there. But the majority of the time I'm going to tell you guys, people have PGs. They always have perfect guards. So don't ever think that your opponent's never going to have a perfect guard or they won't attempt to block it with the regular cards in their hand. So, But all around, I think the card's decent. It builds your hand. Um, especially if you're playing a decent amount of draw triggers. Um, for the most part, this card is good. It denies damages. It's strategies where you would use your Vanguard to attack a rear guard sometimes. It sounds it sounds wild, but you either use it, depending on how your opponent's playing, you'll use your two rear guards in the front row first, attack a rear guard. If they let it go, they let it go. You would, you attack their other front row rear guard. Now they have no rear guards in the front. Then you swing at your Vanguard. So now they just coughed up two rear guards on the side. Your Vanguard's going to pop a unit on their field as well. So you just killed, you effectively killed three rear guards and you're dropping their hand. So they got to make up for that, that minus and call depending on what type of deck they're playing. They're going to have to call to the field for the next turn so they can, you know, fight back. If they don't call, you're looking pretty. So how many copies? So that's three copies of Gus Blaster. I'm going to say three. Why not four? Can't, I don't think it's necessary to run four for the fact that you have four PBDs. PBD mainly is there for the... For the whole fact of popping your opponent's field. So if you wind up getting PBD first, you obviously you ride PBD first if you get him. It sucks to ride Gust Blaster first because Gust Blaster effectively has a vanilla skill, which is you getting plus 10 and you draw a card and they retire one. You don't get the crit skill. You need to have a grade 3 blaster prior to using his skill. So it sucks if you ride him first. You run three because in this deck build that I'm running, I run um nine grade threes, which I'm gonna get to right now. But if you run if you run four of him, you're gonna more likely to see him. 
and if you keep if you write into him it's fine if you write into him twice then you get the skill up but you want to do as much as possible before getting to him so if you use him get to pop a few cards even if you don't you have the option of having him in your hand later on in the game you can write over him soul blast get a damage off for free you know what i mean so it still works out you don't want to run four and four you want to have as much um opportunities available to you with the grade threes so like somebody like this i still run him i still run car so car is a soul blast one and you look at the top part of your deck and you call to your rear guard and you can put it into your drop zone too i don't know what the reasoning behind that would be but i guess just to have the option to do it but if you call that unit that you call from the top part of your deck um it gets plus 5k until the end of the turn and then you retire that unit so what that is what helps that play is you call him to your field you call the unit out and you'll get a card and whatever the card is it gets plus five during that turn you want to make sure you use that card to its fullest capability you might want to attack with that card that just got called out by his skill because remember that card that you just called out is going to get retired so you might as well use it attack with it or boost with it whatever you have to do and then retire it with the card like well you can't really retire him during the, the um, attacking phase but you can have a free card you can call him and effectively pretty much call out another unit and in that scenario, you only called one card from your hand using his skill. So you called him, that's one card from your hand, then Soul Blast, you call a card from the top of your deck, and you have two units on your field now. So you just use the one card to get two units on your field. And now Phantom Blaster, you might have another unit on your field already prior from your other turn, and you just retire three. So you just use the one card from your hand to do that. And then you could you get into the part where you call out rear guards from your hand afterwards. So you're not really minusing too heavily, but also helps his play more because he retires two. So you call one card from your hand, which is him, this great three right here, car, soul blast one, call a card from the top of your deck. Requirements met. Right there. Soul blast uh kind of uh kind of blast one, retire two units with his skill. There you go. You only wasted one card for that whole turn for his skill to pop off just now. And then you draw a card with this skill and then you twin drive. So it's just like you pretty much don't use nothing. too many Yeah, you don't use any you don't lose too many resources. But this is barring that you're playing the deck um effectively as well. Because there are gonna be times where you get like not that many great hands, but you can work with what you have a majority of time with this deck. Um, so I'm going to show off some great twos right now. I think the, one of the most important cards I'm going to get into is actually... Yeah, we're gonna. it's going to sound funny, but... Maka. We're going to get into this card because people have cut her from the deck. And I think it's better to keep her in the deck because you don't have much counter charging and if your opponent is playing on the basis of knowing the deck and how it plays they're going to damage deny you and you're not going to have any counter blast so you need to always make sure you have an effective way to get counter blast she is one of the best counter uh, counter chargers in the deck using obviously the grade one sharon so she herself is not a counter charger but the combo is call maka and you call sharon which is a great one i'm going to show you eventually and um that literally gets you a two cards on the field for the cost of one counter blast and they both get power so maka gains plus 5k for calling a grade one or a great a grade one or less from your hand and you draw with that skill as well so it's pretty good but you want to make sure she stays in your deck for plays like uh sharon being able to call it call sharon soul blasting and counter charging and then you gain an additional card to hand right after so if you didn't have a decent enough field to um attack with or to retire with through your grade threes and now you might have a better chance because of that extra draw so that's maka and you play four copies of her because you want to see her as much as possible. And if she gets hit out of your deck, at least you have four more to, or you have three more in the deck to back her up. Um, I'm actually going to talk about Dark Mon Trumpeter as well. People have been weird, doing weird builds, excessive plays of Dark Mon Trumpeter. I don't understand it, but like four or three copies of this unit in the deck. And I don't see that card being like that high in the deck, like that amount of units. Three is like, I guess you could run three, but I definitely run two at max. Three is pretty unnecessary. If you have maybe if you have bad luck getting them hit, you know, like early game, then I understand why you have one extra one in the deck. But honestly, you want to play this this card at two at least. Um, if you want to cut back, you can even play it at one. It's not necessary, but Dark Mon Trumpeter's skill is when placed, counter blast one, search your deck for up to one five K card, five K power card, call to rear guard in rest position and shuffle your deck. And when your five K rear guard is placed this unit gets plus three cancel the end of turn. This skill works on both Vanguard and Rearguard for both skills. So effectively, what you want to do with this card is if you have this card in the beginning of the game, you don't have any mains in your hand, you want to ride this or call it depending on whatever you have in your hand. So more than likely, you probably call this the Rearguard, kind of bust one, call the main out in rest position. And then this card gets plus three. It's just to get the mains out early so you don't have to go searching for the main because the main is the main one of the main engines of this deck which gets you out your other five Ks from the deck. So two, 
max one if you want to go that way i then you might as well but if you don't have issues getting the mains or you're going to draw in the mains a lot because you most likely play four but you want to run that card at, at um two at least and it hits decent numbers if you put it on the first four circle and you call um 5k units because triggers count too as 5k units as you guys should know already um blast of dark there's not really much to say about this card honestly you ride blast of dark if they have a unit on their field kind of blast one retire their unit um you can also drop a card from your hand and then this card effectively gets twin drive if they have no units on their field you need to remember that if they have no units on their field besides their vanguard you're fine but if they have rear guards you can't use the skill but there have been instances where opponent will have maybe two or three units on the field and i just happen to open with blast of darks like three in my hand and i happen to just pop all the units and go for a twin drive right there and yes i've done that for the sole factor of that yeah it seems neg because you're calling two extra cards from your hand and you're wasting your counter blast but the thing is you're dropping one and you're getting two back but the issue is with that is that if you hit two triggers in that drive tech that's good but at least you know that you're replenishing your hand after doing something like that and you just effectively retire three units on your opponent's field on grade two so and especially if you're fighting like a deck like excel deck or a, another force deck force decks like like of what like um well neo nectar is pretty free but decks other decks like paladin decks like you'll have a decent chance to if you retire their rear guards early it sucks for them and then especially with excel decks so they need all the pieces they can get so blast dark i run them at three if you want to run them at four which i'm thinking about putting them back to you can go for it but i think three is pretty decent you don't need to always open up with dark it's not necessary but if you do open up with them because you play three it's still a win-win okay so this card is weird it's blaster act it's from the trial deck he's a 10k interceptor which is why i'm running him for now i feel like I, i'm swapping between this card right now this i play two so the funny thing about this card is that you're gonna wind up looking for cards like curse lancer curse lancer is the card i told you about which i'm actually going to show you that unit it's a very interesting unit and you swap between them you find you're gonna you might find yourself swapping between them because curse lancer is this card right here and curse lancer what curse lancer makes you do is you ride this card on top of another unit on your field and if you have no counter blast you soul blast one and you unflip that you unflip that damage and you get plus 10k but this can only be used if you have no damages face up so and he's also it's also like all right you could call him and if you if you have damages face up too you still get the plus 10 but you have to make sure you ride him on top of a unit so that's the annoying part at times. But if you work with this card while you have Gust Blast on the field, you retire, you force retire a unit on your field. So you just gave your Vanguard a crit for free right there. You don't have to retire anything with the Vanguard skill. He also gets plus 10, which is already a 20k right there. And then you, if he's on a four circle, he's a 30. So it's hitting a good number. And there's nothing more to say about this card. The only issue is you read the text, it says something else. The errata for this card is that you must write, you must call this card on top of a unit. Do not read what it says in the card. Like the continuous skill is not true. You have to look this card up if you're gonna play it. And if you were to use this card, I would say running that too, to be honest. Because there are times where you're not gonna need the counter blast, but there will be some instances when your your opponent holds you back counter blast, and you might really need to get this card. But that's why I'm trying out Maka right now at four. You can even run this card with Maka. I have done it, but then I realized I'm not really doing much with this card. It's not really doing anything because I have I, how I started playing against opponents. They wind up still having to give me damages. So it winds up me just being like, all right, it depends on how you play. So you don't necessarily need to use this card all the time. But it is a strong backup card if you need to. If anything, you can run that two and at least at one if you really want to try that. So Blast Axe here is mainly for the 10k vanilla swing. If you're on a Excel, uh, Excel if you're on a Force Marker, 20 and you have a booster, like an a 8k booster. That's 28 right there. It's a decent number. And then on top of that, he's a 10k Interceptor. That is really good if you're fighting like a lot of Excel decks, which you should be in this meta right now. So it's really good. Um, That's it for the grade uh, two lineup. Grade one lineup is pretty self-explanatory. Swordbreaker, we just got her. When this unit is placed on the field, kind of as one, draw a card. And if this unit was placed from hand, this unit gets plus 5k. So you draw a card no matter where you place this card from. So if you use the main skill, you rest in the mains, you call this card out from your deck. She comes out, kind of blast one, and you draw a card. She doesn't get in the, pl the plus 5k skill, but at least you get the effective free draw. So you get one, you get plus one card, because the main is already on your field. You just effectively drew one card for free. So that's it. She's nothing more to really say about her. You run her at three. If you're running her at four, that's super excessive. I don't understand why. Um, three is a decent amount to run. Two is the least, I would say, to go with this card. But you want to make sure you have targets for um, the main. Because in the main, you're going to run at four. And if the main is getting hit left and right out of your deck somehow, 
then that's gonna suck. So this is the, the card I just mentioned, the main, Skull Witch the main, her skill, uh, rest this unit, it's an axe skill, so you rest this unit, you search your deck for up to one 5k power card, call to an open rearguard circle, and shuffle your deck. This ability can only be used once per turn. So if you have another in the main on this on the field, and you have you have two, you cannot rest both of them and get two grade ones out for free. So you cannot do that. She helps your plays where you don't have many units on the field and your hand is looking a certain way, you don't want to call too many out. You rest her, call another unit that has a 5k power, and you have two units on your field right now for the cost of one card that's just now, and then you call maybe one card from your hand, and there you go. You retire whatever, how many units you need to. Three units for uh, Phantom Blaster, two units for Gust Blaster. She sets up your plays with stuff like that. And she also helps you uh, filter the deck out. So if you need to hit some triggers, she might be helping you do that too. Um, here goes Sharon. Sharon's the card I featured, um, well, was talked about earlier when I was talking about Maka. This is the combo where you counter blast one, uh, call this card from your hand with Maka. This card gets plus three because it was called using the ability of a unit and you soul blast using Sharon's skill and you counter charge one. This card gets plus three because of that. So Maka gets plus five, Sharon gets plus three. That, that column is swinging for 26. If you're on force, you're swinging for 36. These are good numbers. 26 is alright, but you want to swing for higher numbers than that sometimes, like, because a 15k block, that's a 15k block, pretty much. Last but not least for the grade 1 lineup is Blaster Dagger. I run two of these. Um, This is pretty self-explanatory as well. So, when this unit attacks or boosts a unit and it hits the Vanguard, you soul charge this card, and they, they choose a card on their field and retire it. This works well with Gust Blaster when you deny them damages, and they want to take a damage, so your last rear guard that's about to attack, they got to decide, if I take this, I might lose a unit on my field. So it makes them either drop or take and you, you minus them effectively one when, when you're on the field and you get cards to your soul. So it helps cards like Sharon and it helps cards like um my grade three car magician. So helps him. But a dark mage rather he's not a magician. Um trigger lineup. Straight up gonna tell you. Five draw triggers, four being the PGs, five for the fact that you can gain hand a little bit faster and also for the extra call. With the mains, because this is a 5k unit as well. You don't often want to call your PGs with her skill, but if you have to, you have to. But this is here for that reason as well. So you use this card first if you don't want to call out a Swordbreaker. Because sometimes you want to have Swordbreaker in hand to call her from hand so she get the plus 5k. So she becomes a 10k booster. So 5 draw triggers. Crit trigger lineup. It's going to be 7. Pretty self-explanatory. You want to make sure you keep the pressure on your opponent because they might think you're running the build where you get a whole bunch of hand, but you want to make sure that they, they see crits coming out of your deck every other turn or so. So they're like, all right, he's running a lot of crits. This person's running a lot of crits, so I got to be careful. So it helps with Gust Blaster plays where they uh, block a Gust Blaster, and then you go for the drive check and you hit crits on your rear guard, and then I got to block that. So, And obviously, we know we know them and we love them. Hail Triggers, because they sure save us. Them? Sometimes we don't love them. I don't I don't often love them. I draw my heel triggers the majority of the time. But oh, you're going to take that damage in the future, though. Yeah, man. See? The reversing of those triggers, right? But four heel triggers because you need to live. And you need to have a good shield in your hand sometimes. So that's about that for the Shadow Piling build. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. Bye.